Hi, welcome back. I'm so glad you decided to join me today or else I'd be here by myself. Well, I'm Charlotte, Evangelist Charlotte Lumpkins, and this is Shout It Out to the Rooftops Ministry. And I'm doing a series called Freedom in Christ and the Kingdom of Heaven. Yes, this is for everyone. If you ever had questions, maybe you heard something about the Kingdom of Heaven as a child. Maybe you heard something in a conversation you wanted to follow up, but you had just too many questions. Well, I'm here to help you answer those questions because I'm searching the Bible to find out for myself. Yeah, you ain't on this alone. I want to know about the kingdom of heaven too. So we're talking about the rapture. Yes, part one about the rapture. And he is coming back. He is coming back for a people that are ready to receive him. They've been busy for him. They've been working for their Lord. And they're anticipating any day now that their master will return. So we're going to open in prayer. We're going to do a little review for my new listeners, and then we'll bring you up to speed. And we're going to talk about the church without spot or wrinkle. That's the next part to the rapture. He's coming for a church without spot or wrinkle. Our Father, in the name of Jesus, God, we thank you for the written word that guides us daily, God. We can look into the written word, God, and it'll tell us what thus saith the Lord. Father, we know that you are here with us. We want you to dwell with us, Lord. We want you to open our understanding, and we want you to lead us daily so that we can learn more about you. Father, I just pray that we would hide the word in our heart that we might not sin against you, because if we have your direction, if we have what you want us to do, Lord, we won't be satisfying ourselves or the things of the world. Oh, Father, be with us just now. Meet every need of every listener. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Lord, meet every need of every listener. Okay, for those who are joining me for the first time, I'm going to give you some scripture references and just some quick notes. I won't go into detail. We talked about in Rapture Part 1, we talked about he's coming back, and our scripture was Revelations 22, 12 to 14. And then we talked about Enoch. Enoch from the Old Testament, from Genesis, and that was Genesis 5, 21 to 24. Enoch was translated. Enoch was taken by God. Yes, he was. And then Elijah was translated into heaven as well. A fiery chariot. Yes, it was. And horses and everything. And, and um, Elisha was watching. He was translated right into heaven. And that is 2 Kings 2, 3 to 11. You check that chapter out. And then Jesus ascends into heaven as well. Yes, according to Acts 1, 9 to 12, the angel was said to the disciples, why are you all staying here gazing? That same Jesus that ascended will come back one day. And that's what we're talking about. The, he is coming back. He ascended and he's going to come back and we're going to be with him. The next thing it says, we shall all be changed. Yes, that's a promise. We're going to have glorified bodies. Yes, we are. Mortality is going to be swallowed up with immortality. We need a body like Jesus. Jesus' body was made for eternal life. Our body is going to be made for eternal life too. And then it says, we will ascend and meet the Lord. Those who have died, you know, their relatives and family and friends that have passed away, they're in the grave, but scripture says they're going to rise first. Yes, they are. And we who are alive will remain. We're going to be taken out with them and meet the Lord in the air. Oh my goodness. Doesn't that sound like a Spielberg movie? Yes, it does. But it's going to happen because we read it here. Remember, God's word gave us a promise. So we're going to have new glorified bodies. In order to have a new glorified body, you have to be born again, washed in the blood of the Lamb. You have to be cleansed from sin and no longer walking in sin, walking in the newness of Christ. Put off the old, put on the new, keep your mind in Him, pray, do the things that He asks you to do daily, do good deeds, love one another. It's right there. It's all in here. And he says, and we will have new bodies. That's according to John 14, 1 to 3. Consider yourself up to speed. Okay. That's for my new listener. Today, we are going to do rapture part two. And it is, he's coming back for a holy people. What this means to me, according to Ephesians 5, 27, and Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3 to 7, and 1 John 1 to 9. And it says, what this means to me, he's coming for a holy people without spot or wrinkle. 
And remember we read it says, abstain for the things of the world. Remove your heart from those things. Take your mind off of those things. Don't be craving those things. Don't be tempted by those things. Stay in the grace and in the power and in the focus. The Bible says, narrow, narrow is the way to life. Wide is the road to destruction. Now is the way to life and few thereof that find it. Decide what road you are on, okay? You have to decide. Is your mind and your heart and your spirit on the road to the kingdom of heaven where the Bible promises you will get your purple robe? We read that yesterday. He gives us wisdom and understanding. You're going to get your purple robe and you're going to get a grand entrance into the kingdom of heaven. Beloved, that's a promise from the word of God. So, He's coming back. We, he's, we're, those who are not walking according to the flesh, but according to the spirit, and the spirit is love. Let's do Revelations 3, 15. Revelations chapter 3. Consider yourself caught up. And our first scripture today is Revelation chapter 3, verse 15 to 16. Revelations, get your Bible and your notes, and you read the whole of chapter, okay? I'm going to read Revelations chapter... Verse th uh, chapter 3, verse 15, you read the whole chapter 3, okay? Here it goes. The Bible says, I know all the things you do, that you are neither hot nor cold. I wish that you were one or the other. But since you are like lukewarm water, neither hot nor cold, I will spit you out of my mouth. You say I am rich. I have everything I want. I don't need a thing. And you don't realize that you are wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. Who is he talking to? The church. So I advise you to buy gold from me, the Bible says. Gold that has been purified by fire, that you will be rich. Also buy white garments from me, so you will not... Be shamed by your nakedness and ointment for your eyes to see, you will be able to see. I correct and discipline everyone I love, so be diligent and turn from indifference. This is what he's saying. Being mediocre, living in the middle, living in a, oh, I'm not worried about that. Uh, it's no big thing. Um, uh, they, they, they're fine. Uh, let them figure it out. He's trying to tell you living in that middle, in that gray, and not making a decision to follow him day by day puts you in damaging, damaging trouble. You need to know. Here's how important it is. If you had a teacher that said to you, we're going to have a test in the morning, and she tells you what the chapters are, she tells you where you want, she wants you to review, and then you go like, I don't really believe her. She always says that. I heard that she promises a test and then um, she doesn't give it. She says something came up and she couldn't prepare it. The next day you get to class and because that's what you think, you don't prepare. You'd be like, she's handing out the paper. She's handing out a test. She's handing it out. And she said it's a three-page test and you didn't study. That's what he's talking about. You made up your mind that you thought you knew the teacher. You had in your mind by your inference about her that she wasn't going to keep her word. People think the Lord's not coming back because they haven't seen any signs of it. Their life is going on good. Like it says, I'm rich. I'm doing everything I need to do. I'm cool here. I'm fine. I'm not into all that religious stuff. And you don't believe. So you're not prepared for when the test comes. Beloved, listen. Prepare. The test is coming. It is. And it's coming on earth. And it's coming for those people who have rejected Jesus the Christ. So he says, verse 20, look, I stand at the door and knock. If you hear my voice and open the door, I will come in and I will share a meal together as friends. Those who are victorious will sit with me on my throne just as I was victorious and sat with my father on his throne. He wants you to not be indifferent. Listen, he wants you to not be indifferent to the things that are happening in the world, to the things that are happening in the, in the relating to the gospel, to the things that you heard about Christ and him returning. 
He doesn't want you to be indifferent. He wants you to be on fire for that truth. He wants you to be sharing that truth. He wants you to be living that truth. He wants you to set aside those things that distract you from that truth and get on fire for God. Understand? He wants you to put off procrastination. He wants you to put off thinking that, oh, he's God's not coming. That's just what those people think. They've always said that. They've been saying that since he left. He's coming back. But he loved, he's coming back. Do you understand? He doesn't want you to be lukewarm, trying to play the middle, you know. Sunday, you're in Sunday school, a conference come up, you go, you dress on nice, you're ready. But after the conference, people have no idea that you are a child of God. That's play in the middle. Don't play the middle. Choose this day whom you will serve. And he's telling you, I'm coming, I'm going to knock on your door. Are you prepared for when the Lord comes for you? Are you prepared for his return? We are talking about the rapture. He is returning, and he doesn't want you to walk around indifferent to that truth. He wants you to walk in that truth, okay? Here's another one. Let's go. That was people called by his name, and let's do this one. Here it is. He says, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Did he tell you what to do? This is how you get out of indifference. This is how you get from cold to hot, but you get out of that middle of lukewarm. He says, he says, humble themselves, right? Pray, two, seek his face, three, Turn from the wicked ways, for, and I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sins. You have responsibilities, beloved. Yes, we do. As born again, as people washing the blood, as people who are said that we are saved people, we have a responsibility to him humble ourselves. The, the Bible said that the church said they're rich. There are people who say, I got everything I need, God. Um, you, can, you can sit this one out, God, you know. Uh, uh, I'm satisfied the way you bless me. <laughs> God, you can sit this one out. I'm okay. You know, I'm doing all the things that make me happy and I feel you're blessing me and, and nothing I have to worry about. But as far as living your life for Christ, as far as denying yourself and following him, as far as giving to the poor, visiting those in prison, giving people something to drink, giving the naked some clothes, as far as those things are concerned, you have no idea what I'm talking about. And that's your problem. You might have all those things collected for yourself, but you have no others. You have no others in your life that you care for. So he says, listen, listen, humble yourself. I know you're up there. I know you feel successful. But he says, get off that pedestal and humble yourself. And then he says, pray, come back to me and pray. He says, seek my face and turn from the wicked ways. If you're doing all those things, you can't be in the world. If you're seeking his face, if you're praying and you're turning from the ways of the world, there's only one road that you can travel at a time. And it's not the road of indifference. You've chosen Christ. You've chosen the Holy Spirit. You've chosen God. You've chosen to do what he says to you. And that is come to me now. If you want to be healed, if you want your life improved, he says, I can see you're naked. I can see you're rich. I can see you're falling apart. You say my material stuff is keeping me all looking good and feeling good. But he says, you're looking on the wrong end. From what I can see, God says, you're rich, you're falling apart, and you're naked, and you need to come to me and get what I have for you. And that is the covering of the Lord Jesus Christ. Beloved, I know this is hard. I know it's not the first thing you might have want to think about hearing first thing about his return. But my job, my job, beloved, is to help you get ready for his return. Because we don't know the day or the hour. Let's do another one. Revelations 22, 12 to 14. I pray that you are taking your time. Read this whole chapter. Read chapter 22 by yourself. I'm just going to read a couple of verses, okay? Chap Revelations, the old the New Testament, chapter 22, 12 to 14. Here we go. He says, Blessed are those who wash their robes. They will be permitted to enter through the gates of the city and eat the fruit from the tree of life. Did he tell you what to do? Did he tell you? Repent, turn to him, leave your wicked ways. He said, Listen, listen, wash your robes. Listen. 
He says, and they will be permitted to enter through the gates of the city and eat the fruit of the tree of life. He's telling you, he says, I, Jesus, have sent my angel to give you this message for the churches. I am both the source of David and the heir to his throne. I am the bright and morning star. He says, come, come, let anyone who hears this come. Let anyone who is thirsty come. Let anyone who desires to drink freely from the water of life. That's you and me. He says, who hears the words of, of prophecy written in this book. If anyone adds anything to what is written here, God will add that to the persons, the plagues described in this book. Beloved, he's making it clear for you. He's making it clear for us. He says, I drew the line in the sand. He's telling you what the requirements are. He says, turn from your wicked ways. Come seek my face. Take off the garments of the world. Put on your robes of white. Abstain from the things in the world. He says, outside are uh, the sorcerers, sexual immoral, the murderers, the idol worshipers, and all who live the life a lie. Listen, there's a lot of stuff to get into. I know. There's a lot of tempting things that you could probably find yourself enjoying. But if you are born again, if you ask him to come into your heart, if you ask him to remain with you, to help you, to heal you, to bless you, and he has, and all you've done is up your ante and pulled away from the needs of the people, all you've done is better yourself, and Jesus is like, yeah, I know, God, yeah, it's cool, and you sing some songs, and you're going about your way. That's called indifference. The example about the teacher saying that she's going to give you a test, and you're playing it off. The example that God says, I'm coming, this is who I'm looking for, this is what's required, and you're playing it off in your mind. He's not beloved. It says you are not going to be happy with your outcome. Because you're going to perish with the world. He said, if you like this world so much, then you will perish it. Because the rapture is coming. And if you don't get your lift off, beloved, then you are left behind. And that's what he says. And these are the ones that we left behind. Beloved, I know this is hard. I know this is probably the first time some of you have even heard about this. But I'm going to take my time for my new listeners and help you out to know that you... And I have a choice every day to make, to humble ourselves, to pray, and to seek his face. Here we go. Isaiah, Old Testament. Find this Old Testament, Isaiah chapter 1. You read the whole chapter, I'm just going to read verse 18. He says, come now, let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, mm -hmm, they shall be white as snow. Though they are red as crimson, they shall be like wool. If you are willing and obedient, two steps, you will eat the best from the land. But if you resist and rebel, here you go, listen up, you will be devoured by the sword. He's telling you, here it is, beloved. He's giving you the choice. He's weighing you in the balance. Listen, if you think you're all that and a bag of chips, he's telling you, humble yourself. Come back down here. Be realistic. Listen, you're not all that. He, what he says about you and me is true. We're naked without him. We are not covered. Even though we got stuff in the world that, is, I mean, we could wear cardines every day. But guess what? According to him, we're naked. We're wretched. And we have no right to be walking around as if we're all that and a bag of chips. Listen, he's telling you. He says, though they are red, your sins are crimson. They shall be white. They shall be like wool. If you are willing, there you. it's up to you and me. If we are willing, willing to be obedient, and we will eat the best from the land. He says, I will heal their land. But if you resist, there's consequences. There's consequences, beloved, if you resist. If you resist and rebel, you will be devoured by the sword. Nobody is putting anything on you that you haven't heard or read here. That teacher says to you that she's going to have a test. You thought in your mind that you can ace it or she'd never follow through before. The test comes out in the morning and you are not prepared. Instant zero. Instant F. Instant, your grade point drops and you're in trouble. You didn't believe her. Beloved, we are telling you the end times is coming. We are telling you the rapture is coming. He wants you to humble yourself, come out of the ways of the world, because the test is coming 
on the earth. Oh my goodness. I hope this is helping somebody today. Please listen, listen, listen. The test is coming on the earth. Yes, it is. Let's do John 3.3. 3. John 3.3. 3. He says, you read the whole chapter of chapter John. He says, I tell you the truth, unless you are born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. Beloved, that's what it is. For those who don't know how to enter the kingdom, you must be born again. Let's surmise. One, he tells you. He can see what we really are. We think we're all that in a bag of chips, but we're not. He's telling you, I can see what you really are. And from his perspective, you need his covering. You need his blood. You need his washing. You need your white robe. You need to have yourself put into the hands of the living God where he can change you from the inside from the inside, so that you can be more like his son. Beloved, I'm Evangelist Charlotte Lumpkins. We are just getting started, preparing you for the rapture. He's coming back. The test is coming on the earth. Where will you stand? I hope, like me, that you will be part of the ones that will meet him in the air and get our robes on and grand entrance into the kingdom of heaven. Yes, we hope that that is your desire. But I also must warn you that if you rebel and if you refuse, then scripture says you will die by the sword. Come on back. We got so much more to talk about. I look forward to you joining me again.